Now let's talk about summer. Today is uh, the 10th of June. So we're two to three weeks away from the 4th of July. That is always my date that I use in my head. Should be my wife's birthday, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's the 4th of July. Um, it's a really good, good time of year to start your summer progression. By the end of June, there is next to nothing available for the bees here. Okay. You may see them hitting some pollen, bringing it in. You may see them eh, bringing in a little nectar. There's nothing here. And what happens is it, it gets compounded actually on their um, consumption rate, especially in Florida, because we have a rainy season that rains every day. And when it rains, they're gonna come back in. And depending on when it rains, they may exit for a second time or not. The longer they're in that hive, they eat, right? It's like my kids, when they come home from summer, from school for the summer, I, that's great. My food bill just went up $200, right? Because it's like, I want a snack, I'm bored. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And I say, you don't get a snack in fourth grade and you eat lunch at 11.30. You do fine, right? All those times of the year. So that's what happens in a beehive though. So anything that they've accumulated in the spring is gonna go quick because there's nothing coming in and they're in, the, in that hive more. The other thing to keep in mind when we're in the Southeast is the temperatures gets hot. Now beehives can regulate their temperatures very much like we do. So if we walk out and it's, and it's 30 degrees, we'll shiver, but our blood isn't dropping to 30 degrees. We'll, we would be dead. Same thing, when we walk outside, we may sweat because it's hot. That's our body's way of cooling off, but we're still gonna be 98 degrees on, as an internal temperature your beehive works the same way. That's why you might see bearding on the outside. That's air conditioning, right? That's fanning. They're starting to fan. Fanning takes energy, <laughs> burns carbs, consumes more food. See what I'm trying to get at? Every single thing that those bees are doing, you have to think in your head, that's more food, it's more food, it's more consumption. So, 4th of July, before the barbecue, before the fireworks, go to your bee yard, okay? That's your homework. Plan when you're going to the bee yard, right? Make sure that you've got everything that you want to get done. You've got it, it's in your car or in your truck, everything. That way the trip is one and done. Every time we go in a beehive and we open that hive, that's like someone coming to your home and ripping off your roof. It'd get kind of annoying after a while, right? So first thing we're gonna do, 4th of July, we're gonna check our mite count, okay? And we're gonna check our mite count with a mite shaker. This is not a lot of money. This is one of the most important tools that you'll have. For anyone that hasn't seen it, it's got a sieve on the inside and two lines, which indicate 150 bees or 300 bees. The second line, the higher one is 300 bees. We're gonna go into our hive and we're gonna grab a frame from the brood nest. Don't grab a honey frame, okay? That's like those retirement calculators where we can make up all sorts of numbers and be like, oh, great, I'm in great shape, right? No, don't grab a honey frame. It's not gonna be accurate for you. Grab it right in the middle. And please, please, please make sure your queen 
is not on that frame, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that frame, we're gonna flip it and hold it by the end bar. And we're gonna take this cup and all we're gonna do is bring it right up and they're gonna fall right in here. After that, you've got your shaker cup. You're gonna put it in here. Put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the bottom. It's gonna kill those bees and that's okay. Because we have this idea sometimes in our head, like I don't wanna kill, kill my bees. Well, I always try to put it, these things into like real life analogies. It's always was easier for me to understand. If I went to the doctor and he said, hey, that doesn't look normal, I'd like to do a biopsy. I'm gonna say, here, take the whole arm, <laughs> right? Let me know what's going on, right? I'm not gonna say, oh, I don't, no, 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 no. That's the same thing with a beehive. We can't look at them as individual bees. You gotta look at that hive as an organism, okay? So those 300 bees that you're gonna kill is gonna give you an accurate detection of how sick or healthy that colony is. So we're gonna shake this real, real good. We're gonna pull this out with our cup of dead bees. And in here, we're gonna count the mites because the alcohol will separate the mite from the bee. Now, in a lot of books, or um, some of us have, are familiar with testing for mites through a sugar roll, don't do that here because there's humidity in the air. And what happens when there's humidity with powdered sugar and sugar? You're gonna clumpy. And then what you're depending on is those bees properly cleaning and grooming for you to get a proper mite count. A sugar roll, it does not work here. It'll work, but it's not gonna be nearly as effective of giving you correct data and information, okay? And again, that goes to learning the things that are applicable to where, where we're keeping bees. Keep alcohol wash. So we've got 300 bees and I see four mites out of 300 bees. So I have just over one mite per 100 bees. That's pretty good. I really need to treat and think about treating and we're gonna treat regardless, but that's a good number. Our goal is zero, but one, to under two, there's a threshold of how much we can manage. Now, if I have 12 mites, now I've got four for every hundred. Now that's, I treat yesterday. You shake it, you count, we got like 24 your hive is in big problems. Now you're rolling eight mites for every hundred bees. That depends on how many hives you have. If you have three hives and you feel better testing, test them, but all three are getting the same treatment regardless. Okay. Bees are so social. We're gonna treat for mites. What weekend? Fourth of July weekend. And if you don't treat Fourth of July, you're at the very least gonna know what are my mite counts, so I know what I should treat with. If our mite count is two or less, we're gonna treat, but we've got options on the types because it's not a larger threshold. Apivar, I'd still recommend it. Even if you got two mites per hundred, just clean them up. The reason I don't like to blindly treat, even though what you're saying is if I'm gonna do it every summer, why don't I just do it without checking? 
is you always need to be aware that's your public enemy, number one. So if you bypass that, that's a big part of keeping bees. It's just another step, but you're better for doing it. So that's a little bit on mite, on the, on the mite side in the summer. And before I get into why we're gonna feed throughout the summer, your, your fall brood, typically, even though your queen, we don't have a traditional winter, she's still gonna slow down some in December or January. You're not gonna go like broodless, but she's gonna slow down a little bit. And so, you know, when your hive gets sick in the summer, it's, it's going to your hives, it's gonna affect your hive in the fall. It's gonna affect your hive in the winter. And it's going to affect all your other hives. Remember what I said, bees are social. Okay. So we touched on in the spring, the importance of pollen and protein. Now we got to think about, there's nothing coming in in the summertime. I'm going to feed in around, you know, we know that around the 4th of July weekend, my responsibility to feed on the carbohydrate side, either sugar water or syrup. And that's gonna happen for July, all of August. That is on you. So July and August, we've gotta feed them sugar, uh, either sugar water or syrup, that's gonna check off the carbs, but we need proteins as well. This is Ultra B Dry. And this is a dry powder pollen substitute. This is a 10 pound bucket. And what you would do here is you would put this out about 50 feet, 100 feet away from your hive. And your bees are gonna go forage on it like they would on natural pollen. Bring it back into the hive and turn it into bee bread. If we do those two things, if we do those two things over the course of the summer, and we're checking our mites, we're open to requeening if we need if we need to. We're feeding not only sugar water but carbs and protein, and we take care of these things for July and August. We're gonna have options coming out of the summer and into the fall.